we have some breaking news. There is a tsunami warning for parts of California and Oregon after a 7.0 magnitude earthquake struck offshore. On the evening of Thursday, January 2nd, 2025, at 10.10 p.m. California time, the latest updates from the earthquake 3D globe reveal intriguing seismic activity across the planet. A minor earthquake, measuring 1.3 in magnitude, has been detected near Alaska. Significant seismic developments have also been observed in the Peru-Chile Trench, where a magnitude 6.1 earthquake occurred 52 miles north of Kalama, Chile, at a depth of approximately 61 miles. This marks the second earthquake of magnitude 6.0 or greater in 2025. By comparison, the beginning of 2024 was highlighted by a powerful magnitude 7.5 earthquake in western Japan. This recent event in the Peru-Chile Trench follows notable tectonic activity near a divergent boundary in the South Atlantic Ocean, which often influences stress patterns along the South American tectonic margin. This area, where the Nazca Plate subducts beneath the South American Plate, remains a region of significant geological strain. While smaller earthquakes, ranging between magnitudes 2 and 3, are common in this zone, there are currently no indicators of an imminent larger event. However, the unpredictable nature of subduction zones always warrants close observation. Farther south, the South Sandwich Trench has also seen activity, with a magnitude 5.5 earthquake occurring at a depth of 84 miles. This region underscores the dynamic interplay of Earth's tectonic plates along subduction zones. Meanwhile, in East Africa, a different geological narrative is unfolding. The East African Rift System, a continental rift where the Somali plate is slowly separating from the African plate, has exhibited heightened seismic activity. Over the past seven days, 55 earthquakes have been recorded in this region, including 12 in just the last 24 hours, with magnitudes predominantly ranging between 4.0 and 5.0. This tectonic rifting process where the lithosphere thins and stretches, raises the possibility of future volcanic activity. As the crust continues to pull apart, it may pave the way for magma to reach the surface. The affected area spans an impressive 60 to 70 miles, highlighting the scale of this evolving geological phenomenon. Seismic activity in tectonically active regions often carries the potential for volcanic phenomena. As the lithosphere undergoes thinning due to tectonic movements, conditions can arise that facilitate magma intrusion, potentially leading to volcanic eruptions or the emergence of new activity. The area currently experiencing such tectonic adjustments spans an extensive 60 to 70 miles, indicating that this is not confined to a single volcanic site. The situation warrants ongoing monitoring to assess whether earthquake magnitudes increase further, as the dynamics suggest something significant could be developing. Shifting focus to California, minor seismic activity has been recorded along the San Andreas Fault. Earlier in the evening, a magnitude 2.6 earthquake occurred on the southern branch of the fault, which was reportedly felt by some residents. This event highlights the need for vigilance in an area that has long been accumulating tectonic stress. In addition to the movement along the San Andreas Fault, shallow earthquakes have been detected near the Cottonwood Mountains and Thermal, California, north of Cactus City. These areas have been under observation for some time due to their geological significance. The southern branch of the San Andreas Fault, in particular, remains a region of major concern given its potential for significant seismic events after prolonged stress accumulation. Nevada and the Bay Area in Northern California appear relatively quiet, with only minor seismic activity noted. However, small tremors were detected near the Clear Lake volcanic field. This activity is attributed to geothermal energy production processes in the region, which are known to induce minor earthquakes. These occurrences are well documented and are not considered cause for alarm. Further north, minor quakes of magnitude 1.6 and below have been observed along the coast ranges. Northern California, including areas near Petrolia, has remained relatively quiet, with no significant activity recorded on the seismic monitoring stations today. Turning attention to the Cascadia region, 
Current data reveals no tremor activity at this time. The seismic silence across Cascadia underscores a temporary lull, though the region remains one of the most geologically active in North America. In Oregon, near Mount Hood, a series of minor earthquakes was recorded on the southern flank of the volcano earlier this morning around 10 a.m. These small tremors highlight the ongoing tectonic and volcanic processes beneath the surface. While there is no immediate cause for alarm, such activity warrants close monitoring, as even minor movements can sometimes signal deeper geological changes. Further north, Mount Rainier has also experienced minor seismic activity, though nothing significant has been detected. Across the broader west coast, volcanic activity has been relatively subdued in recent years, with the exception of ongoing eruptions in Alaska and Hawaii. Yellowstone National Park, home to the infamous supervolcano, remains remarkably quiet. A quick look at seismograph data confirms minimal local activity. However, the magnitude 6.1 earthquake recorded earlier in the day, thousands of miles away, was clearly detected by seismographs at Yellowstone, a testament to the sensitivity of these instruments and the far-reaching effects of powerful seismic events. Elsewhere in the United States, Western Texas continues to be a hotspot of seismic activity, with 475 earthquakes recorded over the past 30 days. This high frequency is largely attributed to oil field operations, which are known to induce seismicity in the region. Globally, seismic activity in the Atlantic Ocean remains quiet, except for continued movement along a rift boundary far to the south. Meanwhile, deeper activity has been observed in the Andaman Sea, with a magnitude 5.0 earthquake recorded at a depth of 98 miles near Myanmar. In the Pacific, typical seismic activity persists, with shallow quakes occurring along the Izu Trench near Japan and across the tectonically complex regions of the Philippines and Indonesia. These areas, situated along the Pacific Ring of Fire, are accustomed to frequent seismic and volcanic activity as part of the ongoing geological evolution of the region. In the southwestern Pacific, New Zealand is experiencing an uptick in seismic activity, with clusters of earthquakes predominantly in the magnitude 3 range and a possible magnitude 4 event near the southern end of the Kermadec Trench. This region, a known hotspot of tectonic movement, warrants close observation, particularly around the Hikurangi subduction zone, a critical interface where the Pacific Plate dives beneath the Australian Plate. Shifting to space weather, activity remains relatively subdued, with minimal solar flaring observed in recent days. However, a high-speed solar wind stream is expected to reach Earth on January 4th or 5th, originating from a prominent coronal hole situated at the center of the Sun's visible disk. This alignment with the Earth-Sun plane increases the likelihood of geomagnetic disturbances, potentially sparking auroras visible in higher latitudes. The Space Weather Prediction Center has noted that this solar wind stream could lead to a minor geomagnetic storm, possibly reaching G1 class intensity. The associated KP index is predicted to reach levels of 4 to 5 during this period. Despite the relatively mild forecast, such events serve as a reminder of the Sun's dynamic influence on Earth's magnetosphere. Interestingly, the Aurora Oval forecast, a key tool for tracking real-time auroral activity, remains offline, having been unavailable for several days. While the issue has been acknowledged, its resolution is still pending, leaving enthusiasts and researchers eager for updates. As of now, solar flare probabilities remain moderate, with a 55% chance of M-class flares, a 99% likelihood of C-class flares, and a 10% chance of the more intense X-class flares. These figures highlight the sun's ongoing activity, even during quieter periods. And that's the recent earthquake update. Now, let's dig deeper into the magnitude 6.1 earthquake that happened in Chile. The magnitude 6.1 earthquake that struck the Antofagasta region of Chile on January 2, 2025, is likely associated with the Atacama Fault System, AFS. The Atacama Fault System, AFS, is a prominent geological feature located in northern Chile, 
a region known for its intense tectonic activity. Stretching from the northern coast of Chile deep into the Andes, the AFS plays a pivotal role in the seismic dynamics of the area. To fully comprehend the significance of the AFS, one must explore its origins, formation, notable seismic events tied to it, and the factors that may trigger major earthquakes in this seismically active zone. The formation of the Atacama Fault System is rooted in the complex interactions between multiple lithospheric plates, particularly the Nazca Plate and the South American Plate. Positioned along the boundary where the Nazca Plate is subducting beneath the South American Plate at the Peru-Chile Trench, this region is a hotbed of tectonic activity. The process of subduction has given rise to a network of fault lines, one of the most significant being the AFS. This fault system, primarily a strike-slip fault, runs parallel to the northern Chilean coastline, marking a critical seismic boundary. Over millions of years, the relentless movement of the Nazca Plate beneath the South American Plate has created immense tectonic pressure, gradually leading to the development of the Atacama Fault System. This fault system stretches for several hundred kilometers, cutting through the rugged Andean landscape and the arid expanse of the Atacama Desert. Characterized by a series of smaller fault segments, the AFS exhibits both horizontal strike-slip and vertical thrust movements. This combination of fault types has given rise to a complex and active seismic zone where earthquakes of various magnitudes regularly occur, shaking the region and shaping the geological landscape. The Atacama Fault System has been the origin of numerous seismic events over the years, with several notable earthquakes leaving a lasting impact on the region. These powerful tremors have underscored the immense potential for devastating earthquakes in northern Chile, a region already known for its active tectonic landscape. One of the most significant events occurred in 1995, when the Antofagasta earthquake, with a magnitude of 8.0, struck near the coastal city of Antofagasta. This powerful earthquake caused extensive damage to infrastructure and buildings, reminding residents and authorities alike of the seismic risks posed by the fault system. The earthquake's destructive force not only affected a major coastal city, but also highlighted the vulnerability of densely populated areas in northern Chile to large-scale seismic events. Another major earthquake struck in 2007 when the Tocopilla earthquake, with a magnitude of 7.7, .7, shook the region. This quake caused widespread damage in the city of Tocopila and its surrounding areas, further emphasizing the ongoing seismic threat in northern Chile. The 2007 event served as a stark reminder of the dangers of living in a region so closely aligned with the Atacama Fault System, a tectonic zone capable of producing significant seismic activity. In 2014, the Iquique earthquake, registering a magnitude of 8.2, occurred near the junction of the Atacama Fault System and the Peru-Chile Trench subduction zone. This earthquake caused intense shaking and triggered a tsunami, resulting in widespread damage and a large-scale evacuation of residents in coastal areas. The Iquique event demonstrated the capacity of the AFS to generate not only massive earthquakes, but also secondary disasters, such as tsunamis, which can further exacerbate the devastation caused by the seismic activity. The Atacama Fault System, AFS, is a tectonically active region where the convergence of two major lithospheric plates, the Nazca Plate and the South American Plate, generates intense seismic activity. The primary geological mechanism behind this seismicity is the ongoing subduction of the Nazca Plate beneath the South American Plate. This process is a critical factor in the region's vulnerability to large earthquakes. As the Nazca Plate is pushed downward into the Earth's mantle along the Peru-Chile Trench, immense tectonic stress builds up at the interface between the plates. Over time, this pressure accumulates as the two plates interact, and the resulting strain can eventually overcome the strength of the fault lines along the Atacama Fault System, triggering an earthquake. The accumulation of stress along the fault system is not a linear or predictable process. The AFS is composed of multiple fault segments, 
each with its own unique characteristics and movement patterns. These segments can move independently or in synchrony, creating a complex dynamic. When one segment of the fault moves, the stress in that area can be transferred to neighboring segments. This transfer of stress can set off additional earthquakes, even if the triggering segment itself is not directly involved in the initial event. This process can cause a cascade of seismic activity across the fault system, sometimes leading to a cluster of quakes over an extended period. The interaction of these fault segments creates a more active and dynamic environment where the potential for major earthquakes is consistently present. After a significant earthquake, the region is often subjected to a series of aftershocks. These secondary seismic events can be powerful in their own right, continuing for days, weeks, or even months after the initial earthquake. The aftershocks, while typically smaller in magnitude than the main quake, can still cause substantial damage. The frequency and intensity of aftershocks depend largely on the size of the initial earthquake and the state of the fault system following the seismic event. The continuous seismic activity generated by aftershocks can destabilize the region even further, making recovery efforts challenging and keeping the region in a constant state of readiness. In addition to tectonic forces, human activities in the region have also been linked to an increase in seismic activity. Mining operations, which are prevalent in northern Chile, and oil extraction efforts can induce seismicity by altering the stress on the Earth's crust. These activities typically involve large-scale excavation, drilling, and fluid injection into the ground, which can trigger small earthquakes, although these are generally of lower magnitude compared to naturally occurring events. However, human-induced earthquakes can still increase the overall seismic risk in the region, particularly when they occur in proximity to active fault lines. The presence of mining and extraction operations near the Atacama Fault System means that human activity can sometimes exacerbate the natural tectonic pressures, contributing to the region's overall vulnerability to seismic events. Thus, the combination of tectonic stress from the subduction process, the complex interaction between fault segments, the occurrence of aftershocks, and the influence of human activities creates a volatile environment in northern Chile. The region remains under constant threat of significant seismic events, driven by both natural and anthropogenic factors. As the Nazca Plate continues its slow but relentless subduction beneath the South American Plate, and as human activities continue to exert additional pressure on the region, the risk of major earthquakes in the Atacama Fault System remains high. Monitoring and understanding these triggers, both natural and human-induced, is critical for assessing the potential for future earthquakes and for developing strategies to mitigate the impacts of seismic activity in this highly active fault zone. The Atacama Fault System AFS, continues to pose a substantial earthquake risk to northern Chile, driven by ongoing tectonic movements and its history of significant seismic activity. This region lies within the Pacific Ring of Fire, an area known for its high levels of seismic and volcanic activity. As such, the AFS remains a focal point for seismologists and geological agencies monitoring the region. The fault system is subject to continuous surveillance to track seismic activity and offer early warnings about potential large earthquakes that could impact the area. In response to the persistent earthquake risk, the Chilean government, alongside various research institutions, has made considerable strides in earthquake preparedness and monitoring. Advanced technology such as seismographs, GPS stations, and satellite imagery are employed to observe the movements along the fault lines and detect early indicators of seismic disturbances. These monitoring efforts have been further complemented by the implementation of early warning systems in major cities, providing critical alerts to residents in the event of an impending earthquake. However, despite these proactive measures, the Atacama Fault System remains a formidable source of seismic risk. The unpredictable nature of the fault and the complexity of its movements make it a challenging system to fully understand. Your support helps us bring more in-depth coverage and keep you informed about the forces shaping our world. Stay tuned, stay informed, 
and stay safe.